Hello, this movie will walk you through how to create a 3D object in Photoshop CS6 and then animate it before exporting it out to an animated GIF. I'm using a flat map of the earth here and it's on a layer. It's not a background layer, it's a layer. You can see if I switch the layer visibility up in the layers panel you get the transparent background. I'm going to switch that layer visibility on. It's only one layer in our document. I'm going to switch from the Essentials workspace to the 3D workspace and you'll see my layers panel there but next to it I have a 3D panel and we're going to create a new 3D object from that selected layer and I'm going to click the radio button mesh from preset and I'm going to choose sphere from the drop down menu before clicking the create button. And Photoshop has a bit of a think about this and then we're in our 3D workspace and we've got our primary window and also a secondary window at the top left hand corner. And the secondary window is giving us a top view of our sphere and the primary window is giving us a front view. You'll notice at the top of your screen we've got some 3D buttons. The first one's rotate, the second one is roll, third one drag, fourth one slide, fifth one scale. So we're only going to be using the rotate tool and these tools become active when you have the selection tool, oh sorry, the move tool, I should call it, the move tool selected. I'm going to crop this down a bit because I don't need it as big as that original flat map so I'm just going to use the crop tool to crop in the area a bit. Keep my gif nice and small later on. Return key to apply that and you'll notice I've actually got a shadow being cast by the earth. Now I'm going to go back to the move tool and that'll bring up my 3D tools again and in the 3D panel what's selected is current view but I'm going to click on sphere underneath it and you'll notice in the properties panel it's giving me properties about that sphere and I don't want this sphere to cast shadow so I'm going to untick that and that'll take that shadow off. So we've got a top view in our secondary window and we've got a front view in our primary window and I can actually just rotate that randomly around, I don't want to, but what we're going to do with this cropped image is animate it and to do that I need my timeline visible. You may have it tucked in the bottom of your work area, if not go to your window menu and quite near the bottom you'll see timeline timeline panel pops up. You're going to need to make it deeper than mine was showing. And you'll see why in a minute when I create a new video timeline. You can create two different kinds of animations, a frame animation or a video timeline. And I find working with video timelines a little bit more um, intuitive really. And that's the one we're going with today. So I'm going to click on Create Video Timeline button in the middle of that field, in that window. And you'll see I've got a 10 second section of purple that represents my world. I haven't moved it at all yet, but I can animate it. The first thing I'm going to do is actually shorten it to four seconds by grabbing the right hand edge and whizzing it down. To four seconds. Don't need it to be ten seconds long. The uh, next thing I need to do is expand it, the timeline world layer, so I can see all the options that I can animate. There's quite a few because it's a 3D smart object, and the one that we're going to animate is the 3D meshes 
and it's the sphere. Just if you try to animate and it's not working, just check over in your 3D panel that the sphere is selected in that 3D panel. And I've got my move tool active and my rotate tool active from the control bar at the top. So first things first, let's just shrink this down a tiny bit so you can see the whole what, earth. I'm going to set a keyframe right at the beginning of this four second timeline here. And it's going to be a keyframe for the sphere. There's a little stopwatch icon just to the left of the word sphere. And I'm going to click that to enable keyframe animation on the sphere. And when I click that, you'll notice a little yellow diamond has appeared at uh, the beginning of the timeline. Also, you'll see a green and red line sticking out on our world and there's three sections at the end of each line there's a move pointy arrow bit even if I zoom in you're not going to see these any clearer I'm afraid um, if I zoom out you will so we've got a green arrow and the bottom section of it is to scale it we don't want to do that the middle sort of section is the rotate we will be doing that and the top one is the move on um, y-axis. Trouble is I don't want to um, scale, ro rotate this earth round along the uh, z-axis, I actually want to rotate it around on the y-axis and it's really quite hard as it stands to do that. Uh, in fact I want to, let's have a look It's hard to pick it up um, in this view. So I'm going to swap my secondary view, top view, with my primary view, which is a front view, by clicking the little swap main and secondary view button in the secondary view window. And you can see I can now, I'm now looking from the top down on the sphere, and my secondary window is displaying my front view makes it far easier for me to rotate around the y-axis which is what I want to do to spin the world around. So first of all I'm going to move my playhead in my timeline along to one second by dragging that blue tab across to one second and then I'm going to move my cursor so it hovers around the middle area of the red arrow until the rotate around y-axis tooltip pops up and I'm going to spin that round about 90 degrees and let go and you'll see in the timeline another diamond has appeared and I'm going to drag that timeline around and you'll see my secondary window that's a little rotation that's a quarter of the way around that world. Now in an ideal world we should be able to take that timeline all the way over to four and spin it round for the remaining um, three quarters of a rotation but unfortunately this is Photoshop and it doesn't really like it when you do that so I'm going to slide my playhead to two seconds, hover over the green arrow until it says rotate around y-axis and spin that round another 90 degrees and thereabouts and that will have set a third keyframe at two seconds. I'm going to drag my playhead to three seconds, hover over the red arrow until it says rotate around y-axis again, drag that another approximately 90 degrees and your tooltip should help out with that, get a bit of a clue. And then I'm going to drag it across to four seconds right to the end and move my y-axis round to the final resting point back again another 90 degrees and hopefully when you test that animation it'll spin around 360 degrees there's some play buttons at the top left corner of your timeline panel 
I'm going to just go to the first frame, clicking that first, go to first frame button, and then I'm going to click the play button. And it'll preview that in the top view, which we don't want. I'm going to hit my space bar to stop that. So I shall swap these two views around using the swap main and secondary view button in the secondary window, top right corner. And I can now see the front of my planet. And so I'm going to always that back to the start point, hit my play button. And you can see that world spinning around 360 degrees over a period of four seconds. And hopefully the start point and the end point are very closely matched. So we've now got our, our animation ready. The final thing we need to do is export that as an animated GIF using the save for web command from the file menu. So you go to the file menu, save for web command, and it can take a minute to start rendering this. So you're going to need to save it as a GIF and you can turn off the transparency if you want it on a white background or not and then you can set your animation options so down at the bottom right corner you can choose whether or not you just want it to spin around once or whether you just want it to spin around forever and you can test it before you export it but I'm not going to and then click the save button give it a name save it somewhere where you know to find it desktop. I've already got one there from before so I'll replace that one and when that's saved it doesn't take too long actually the long bit is um, the save for web bit as you saw earlier I'm just going to go to my desktop and find that world animated GIF and drag it over browser to open it up. And there it is. Thanks for listening.